clearest people we've ever had in the waiting room. Just ask Ziggy to find out what happened to L Lita Ader. Okay. The search for Purvis went on for hours. And even though Alan Ziggy said he'd be found, I knew I had to keep looking. Not because I didn't believe them, but because I knew if I went back, it would be to Abigail. Well, I sure as hell hope we find this boy. Sam! Let me go on I got a bad feeling about this. After 28 years of marriage, I know every feeling you got. I'm your husband. Well, of course you're my husband. Unless you want to be that wicked Blackbeard again. Why am I here? Oh, no, you don't. Don't you start that. Start what? That, that craziness about hearing voices. I don't want to hear another word. I heard voices. I said not another word. But what do you mean? That's it. That is it. You have gone and done it. You have ruined everything. I am no longer in the mood. So you can hang up your holsters until next Saturday night. I said my husband is retired. He has a very bad heart. Oh, Sam, Larry never took Abigail's case. But if you would just hear me out. I'll give you two to one. It's because Miss Ice asked there was the reason. I have told you a million times. We don't have to work with this kind of nigger trash anymore. Al was right. I was still in love with Abigail. And as each memory of her found its way back into my mind, it brought with it a history of death. From Lita to Bart, and finally to Violet. Little Violet Ader had waited 25 years for someone to find her. And finally they had. Lita had come after Abigail with a vengeance, desperately trying to mount a case that would send her to the electric chair. But now Lita was dead, and I knew that fate had brought me back into Abigail's life to prove her innocence. Oh, I'm gonna stretch 15 hours into three weeks to get ready for your trial. Should I be afraid, Mr. Stanton? Only we'll if you're guilty. Now there were two people I had to save. Abigail and our daughter, Sammy Jo. And even from her grave, Lita held the key. So after learning that her worst nightmare was true, that her 10-year-old child was indeed murdered and forgotten for 23 years in the bottom of a well that stood in the center of her own hometown, a well that you and you and you Walked past every day of your lives. And never once thought that Violet Ada could be in that cold, silent grave, waiting for someone to discover the truth. The truth. That Lita Ada's little daughter was murdered and left to rot on that hot, stormy day in June of 1953 for a locket. Lita Ada wept in my office and begged me to see to it that justice was done. That Abigail Fuller be made accountable for the life that she took from not just Violet Ada, and not just from her father, Bart Ada, but now from Lita Ada herself. We will prove, with your help, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that on May 15th, 1978, Abigail Fuller allowed the demons that fested inside of her to be set free once again, where she hideously took the life of Lita Ada by slitting her throat. The same exact way her grandmother, Brenda Lanchett, had slit the throats of her entire family. I object. Mr. Stanton, Abigail. I object. Mr. Stanton, 
These are opening remarks. The deaths of Violet and Bart Ader are not relevant to this trial. But they are relevant. The fact that the murder of Lita Ader could be one in a continuing pattern of murders is very relevant. And is Retta Lanchette on trial here too, Your Honor? Mr. Stanton, you will be given ample opportunity to set your opening remarks. And you will please keep the case at hand. This case is not in my hands, ladies and gentlemen. It's in your hands. But the deaths of Violet and her father will prove, without a doubt, that Abigail Fuller is capable of cold-blooded murder. And with that weighty responsibility, I will ask you to find Abigail Fuller guilty of murder in the first degree for the death of Lita Ada. I will ask you to sentence her to die. Death by electrocution. No! The court will come to order. Order in this court. Mrs. Stanton, would you care to address the jury? Oh, uh, yes. Well, firstly, firstly, there's no proof that Abigail killed either Violet or her father. Your Honor, if I could just have a, a, a moment, please. The court will take a 20-minute recess before we bring in the prosecution's first witness. Let's go out. I had found Stanton's nitro pills in his briefcase and taken them. They made the pain in my chest subside enough to make it through the first day of witnesses. I listened as Denton presented a variety of experts and a ton of evidence. I think you've mistaken me for someone else. No. I've been waiting for you for a very long time. Very long time. Clayton said that you come, and then I'd have to tell about Violet. Bingo. What about Violet? You know, Sam, I might be wrong, but I've just got a hunch if you get her into the courtroom and put her on the stand where she can see Abigail and everybody, it'll all just come out. And if Denton Waters disqualifies her testimony, at least the jury will hear the testimony. It wasn't Abigail's fault. Clayton. He knew that. But I only caught the little gold locket that was around her neck. It broke. The chain snapped. Violet was gone. She's gone. to the only person that she could trust, her husband, and told him what had happened. That night in the dark, in the rain, Clayton Fuller decided to keep Laura's secret. And without looking back, he sealed Violet into the well. You expect the court to believe that Violet's death was an accident? And that Bart Ader had a heart attack. Mr. Waters. I object. Counsel is trying to take a woman who's been institutionalized for 20 years and get her to take the responsibility for all of them. 